In the name of our ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper, the host of this program, known here on social media. Wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, angel snub number seven. I am your soul brother, number one. Just a uh, quick, spontaneous broadcast. This is the first broadcast of the new year and I hope that uh, your new year is beginning to be uh, one of the best ones that we've experienced in a little while I thank you so much for listening to us in 2023 and I thank you for your continued uh, support and listening to us throughout this year. It's about responsibility. It's about accountability. When it comes to others, that we don't like they are not held to that criteria or that, that level it's a word I'm looking for I can't think of it right now people we don't like has responsibility and you hold them accountable but those who we worship, those of whom we love, there's no accountability. There's no responsibility for them. And you wonder of why you're in the condition that you're in. Because we like somebody. If I have a leak in my house and you claim to be a plumber and we have been friends for 40 years you're my best friend you come to my house and you make the problem worse why shouldn't I hold you responsible I got a mess on my hands you told me you was a plumber. You made the problem worse. There's water everywhere. We can't use the, the toilet. But using y'all logic, because I like you, you say something that makes somebody feel good. I, I, uh, they do something that we know that is incorrect then we cannot hold them liable for that. That's crazy. Only those with a cult mindset would rise to the level of not holding somebody responsible regardless of who they are because it's a disservice to everybody, including yourself. How do we benefit to let people do the plumbing in our house and they can't do it because we like them? That's your brother. Your bro the brother is not fixing the problem. The, the brother is making things worse. There's water everywhere. But this is our mentality. I don't understand that mentality that we have. I'm very sure I will be the first one because I, ha I have not heard this. I have not heard this from nobody. Especially those who never was in the nation of Islam 
I don't expect them to say anything because they just don't know. They never, they never been in the ranks. But you, in the ranks, you who call yourself a FOI, a fruit of Islam, part of the military wing of the nation of Islam, past and present, it makes no difference. With Farrakhan, without Farrakhan, it makes no difference. There's a duty to you as a soldier. As there's a duty to the military in the United States or Venezuela, or Cuba, wherever you find a soldier, there's a responsibility because your job is to protect your nation, protect your people from threats, foreign and domestic. That's your job. In the nation of Islam, you have captains, you have lieutenant and so forth. Another position they don't talk about. Another position is called investigator. To investigate. The brother or sister investigator, their job is to P P R P how you said it. P R P R I cannot say that in a timely fashion. <laughs> I cannot say that word. Period. Periodically. Periodically. That's okay. <laughs> Some words get me, got me flim flam. Their job is in a timely manner. Check on the believers to make sure, number one. That we are clean because we are taught in the nation of Islam, also in Christianity, cleanliness is next to godliness. So you visit the investigator, sometimes will visit your home to make sure that the brothers and sisters, you're keeping yourself clean. Another job for the investigator is to investigate any type of allegations or accusations of those who have broken or may violate the restrictive law. So there's a rumor that Brother Talik who is not married is messing around with a sister that's not married. And some hanky panky going on. So the investigator will bring this up and investigate to see what's going on here. Has there been violation of the restrictive law? And to my knowledge, the brother and the sister who are being accused will be brought forth, taken before uh, the officials, or sometimes I heard you could be brought, uh, you could be brought before the whole, uh, all the believers, or as they say in the church, the whole congregation. You be brought forth. And if you are found in violation, and mind you, if you had the position of captain or lieutenant or whatever it is, your, your position, even as a believer, is taken away until this issue is has become resolved. Now, if the investigation shows that things aren't what they seem, then you continue to go along and you are in the ranks and the sister keep soldiering and the brother keeps soldiering and y'all keep doing what you was doing as believers. However, 
if we are in violation, then there's a punishment. And you could be ostracized from the nation of Islam and you have no contact with nobody from zero to 90 days. And in the worst case scenario, you are ostracized forever. You are ostracized permanently. But the point I want to make is we have an investigator. And this is fine. This is fine until there's accusations or allegations against the leader. In the past, it was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. In this modern day, it's Louis Farrakhan or whoever the, the leader of these factions are. But when it comes to the leader, there's no investigation. Why is that? Even before Malcolm X knew, there were rumors in Chicago Temple number two that Elijah Muhammad was carrying on with these young women that were his secretary. This was the rumor. Every temple is supposed to have an investigator. And if there's an investigator, it has to be an investigator in Chicago. The job of the investigator is to investigate anybody who may be in violation of the Nation of Islam restrictive law. To my knowledge, I've never heard from nobody that the investigator when these rumors were going around it shouldn't even got far as Malcolm these things should have been made known or the investigator should have investigated and then given his or her report but everybody gets investigated Except the leadership. Who may be in violation. If you're not in violation. Investigate me. An innocent person don't care about an investigation. Investigate me. You would think that even Elijah Muhammad himself. Or Farrakhan himself. Or whoever the leader is. You embrace an investigation. But they didn't. Where was the investigator? If the investigator had done his or her job, then they would have found out the truth. And if the truth was indeed that Elijah Muhammad was in violation, then he is also subject to his post being terminated because he's in violation of the word or that what God instructed. I'm like Eric Muhammad. Talk black to me. Elijah Muhammad was just a messenger. And even according to your scriptures, there were prophets who were in violation of God's will, God's word. And they had to suffer consequence. So you mean to tell me that Elijah Muhammad or any of your leaders, when they violate, they are not subject to punishment for that violation. What does it say in the Quran or the Bible that if you are a prophet or a messenger of God, you are above being punished for, for being in violation 
of the word that God gave you, made you responsible for. Where does it say that at? But the little man, the little woman in the ranks, you get caught with a pig foot in your mouth, oh, you're going to kick you out the temple. But here's somebody making babies with young women, young enough to be your great-great-granddaughter, that's all right. Or other things. It is the responsibility of the military because this investigator is part of the fruit of Islam. This investigator is part of the FOI. It is the responsibility of the military to protect all, to protect the people from all threats, foreign and domestic. So that means nobody is above the law. Donald Trump right now is catching hell even though he was an ex-president he is catching hell because of something somebody believed he did was unlawful. President Nixon resigned because he was not above the law. The President of the United States can be charged with a crime. The Secretary of State, a general in the Army, nobody in this country, you will find them in a courtroom for being in violation of the law that many of them swore an, uh, an oath that you will uphold. But in the nation of Islam, in all this blackity black stuff, the leaders aren't held or held accountable or responsible. If the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was found in violation, if Louis Farrakhan is found in violation, they should be removed from their posts. That's the responsibility of the military. And you will see what we call when government, when leadership become too corrupt, you will see something called a military coup. And the leader is forced to go into exile. Sometimes the leader is caught and executed for being a traitor to the nation. There's no doubt to me. But there should be an investigation. Because if there really was an investigation. Then you would know. Not spread propaganda. There's a difference between research. And propaganda. What you Fine coming from the Farrakhan camp and all these factions about Elijah Muhammad, that's propaganda. That's not research. That's not investigation. That's propaganda. They only do enough to support their narrative. That's not investigation. There should be a coup when it comes to these leaders, no matter who you are. And you should want to protect your investment. Some of y'all have invested or did invest in the nation of Islam for 30, 40 years under Elijah Muhammad and then you've done another 30, 40 years under Louis Farrakhan. That's your investment. And you should want to protect your investment. Also the restrictive laws. Come from God. There's a reason why God gave you. The restrictive law. And everybody. Nobody. Is above the 
restrictive law and you wonder why you're not successful because you allow people to keep pull you down because you like them or they the leader even in this country when the leader I don't care how much you like them if under there's always in this country there's always investigations by Congress there's always an investigation about somebody how many people last year in this country lost their job as a senator or con some congressperson or, or a mayor because they were investigated and they were found in violation of law? So in this instance, the purpose of the fruit of Islam is to investigate and you protect the interests of the people, foreign and domestic. But you're so in love and you have a cult mindset. Some folks are above the law. So you're talking about freedom, justice, and equality. How do you have freedom, justice, and equality and some people, because they are the leader they are above the law. How is that freedom, justice, and equality? How is it equality? No different than in this country where if you're poor, chances are you're going to go to jail. But if you're rich, and you can murder. But if you got the right lawyers, you got the right money, you can probably get away with murder because you got money. That's not equality. But you say, Nation of Islam, you say that we represent freedom, justice, and equality. For who? But the leader, these leaders can do whatever they want. That's not equality. It's not equality that the leaders live lavish lifestyles and the average brother and sister got to hustle. That's not equality. In the nation of Islam, it said you should want for your brother what you want for yourself, and we're supposed to share. Who are who are these with the that's living these lavish lifestyles? Who are they sharing with? What little brother and sister in the ranks are they sharing with? I know when I was in the ranks, nobody gave me nothing. And they saw me working for the cause 24 hours a day. Nobody gave me a dime. It's all a facade. It's not real. Why do you want to continue doing this? Why do you want to continue living this fake lifestyle? Some folks are better than others. I'm going to say this and we're going to get out of here. I saw a post on Facebook where Louis Farrakhan was talking about being unique. Being original to yourself. How are you being unique and original to yourself and then you talk about, I am Elijah Muhammad. I am Malcolm X. I am Louis Farrakhan. How the hell are you unique and original when you talk about, I am Farrakhan, I am Elijah Muhammad? That's not original and unique. And then when you do express yourself in the blackity black, pro black community. And you show that your talent or what you know is just as great, if not better, than the leader. Oh, you want the you want the messenger seat. You want to take over Firecon seat. 
You want to take over Eric Muhammad's seat, whoever the, the leader is. And you're only expressing yourself. That's what happened to Malcolm X. You, he trying to take over Elijah Muhammad. He think he better than Elijah Muhammad. And so what if he so what if he is? Elijah Muhammad or any man can only take you so far. How do you know that Master Farah Muhammad is not sending Malcolm instructions to his mind? How do you know? You don't know that. You say that the answers to your prayers come from the womb of a woman, but then when she gives you the answer to your prayers, you want to run around and kill the baby. Because that ain't how it's supposed to go. How do you know angel step number seven is not the answer to our prayers? How do you know? Well, you, you're not a Muslim. You're you're not blackity black. You're... Because the answer to your prayer is supposed to come in the image and the matter that you believe. When somebody is in bad shape and you want to be saved, you don't care what that image is. When you're in a house on fire, when the firemen come in, you're not tripping on what do you look like. Are you a woman or a man? Are you a transgender? You don't care. The only thing you, you don't care about the vessel. The only thing you know you're in a fire. And this fire and smoke is threatening your life. Here come the fire person. Help you get out of the fire. Y'all crazy as hell. Because that should be your concern. There's nobody that's offering us a realistic option than us. Nobody. And they won't challenge. They will try to mock us, dress me up in a Santa suit, but they won't challenge, bring what they talk about is the solution. They won't challenge us Come here, I will come to you. Give us your solution that you got from 1930, that you got from dead people, Marcus Garvey, Frederick Douglass, whoever the hell it is, that you got from dead people that's no longer applicable, that did not work for them. What make you, the hell, make you think that it's going to work for us now? And you keep talking about the ancestors. And some of you say that your ancestors are reincarnated in, in us, the new. How do you know I'm not that? To bring us the solution once and for all. Aren't you tired of this ring around the roses crap that we go through? This, this devil versus God thing. It just goes round and round. It never stops. It never stops. You do yourself a disservice when you put people so above yourself they can't be touched. Then they touch your daughters. These old men touch your daughters. And these old raggedy men exploit our sisters. You don't have a dime in your pocket Talk about polygamy. And you can't even take care of your damn self. And she's brainwashed and give this polygamist her welfare check. She might go out to work. This supposed to be man. Can't take care of himself when he's a polygamist. Elijah Muhammad took care of all his children because y'all paid that for him. He didn't have a business. He didn't have a job. But the average person on the street helped me pay my child support. Negro, go get a job. Well, tell Elijah, I'm tell Farka, tell all y'all leaders, tell them to go get a damn job. 
And some of them you give money, they still don't pay child support for the babies they got. Oh no, I'm not talking about Umar Johnson. And some of these suckers got lots of women and still want to molest children. I ain't talking about Brother Polite. <laughs> I'm talking about Brother Polite. Y'all want to keep falling for the old okie doke. Everybody. Nobody is above being held accountable. Responsible. All these teachings need to be held accountable. You making claims. God going to do this and blah, blah. Well, do it. Let's see it. You don't get angry at me. You the one telling the damn lie. You claim that you can do this and you claim that you can do that. And, there, and, and folks give you millions and thousands, millions of dollars. This is 2024. Y'all been talking all this bull doo doo on YouTube since 2005. What has all this blackity black, pro black, African, whatever you want to call it, what has it produced since 2005? That's not my fault. And it goes on and on and on and on. Then when somebody like me, hey, this got to stop. And then when I just tell us what the obvious is. You're not. Oh, you are. You are agent. You are coon. No, the agent and the coon are the dumbasses. You wasted your money and your time going nowhere. There's a dumbass Pan African who still can't get over crap that happened two, three years ago. Ask him what he's done during that period of time. What has he produced? He ain't produced nothing. He damn sure didn't go back to Africa. His happy ass is still right here with us. That's where he's at. He's done nothing. I told a young brother that I was investing in, this man is jealous of you. He want to be able to do what you do, but he got to go in his own pocket. You don't have to go in your own pocket. But he didn't believe me. And so now the young brother don't have nothing. And this Pan-African sucker is happy he don't have nothing. And all y'all are happy with nothing. With dreams. What we used to do. We used to do this. And it wasn't all that great. If you go back talking about what you used to do, it wasn't all that, all that great. The civil rights movement produced more that we benefit right now, and this is a fact. You might not like, like Jesse Jackson. I grew up in the era of Jesse Jackson, and y'all talk a whole lot of crap about Jesse Jackson, but it was Jesse Jackson that, that continue to hold up the banner. And y'all black and black folks was doing nothing. Louis Farrakhan was able to come get the national spotlight because of Jesse Jackson. Even though he had thousands of people all over the all over the, the country. The national media didn't pay him no attention until Jackson, Jesse Jackson was dumb enough because he probably was seeking some type of brotherhood, dumb enough to ally with him. When you go look at the old sitcoms like Good Times and the Jeffersons, they, all, they, they talk about Jesse Jackson and the Rainbow Coalition. 
All y'all black and black folks went on damn vacation. And then I give Louis Farrakhan his credit. It was Louis Farrakhan, his activity, that brought y'all back to life. It was Louis Farrakhan. I know because I seen the whole thing in real time. You don't know. Most of you don't know. I saw it. I lived it. I saw it. And I give credit where credit is due. And it don't make no difference who you are, including myself. If I take one dime from you and tell you this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you I'm doing it. I'm going to show you where your money went to. If I want you to support me, I will tell you that. I, I, I want this donation. I want you to help me live. I want you to help me pay electric bill. I will tell you I'm not going to take thousands and millions of dollars and don't produce a damn thing for you just to live good, ride around in limousines and show off, go, fly around in planes. Louis Farrakhan went all over the earth and gave you what? The Goodwill Tour, whatever you want to call it. He came back and talked about how they praised him. What did, what did he bring back to you and me? Didn't give y'all nothing. And that's what you love. You love nothing. You're too scared to stand up for yourself. Personality worship. Cult, cult members. With nothing. Then you want to get angry at people like me. Because I call you out. Because you're a damn fool. Happy with nothing. Anything these Muslims. Whatever they get. You get it on your own. Uh, Farrakhan gave me the teaching. The teachers don't tell you how to get something. You learn how to do that on your own. There's people that don't have no God and doing way better than you are get at getting something. You're a damn fool. Nobody is above the law. So, let's get spiritual. Since you allow people to violate God's law, fruit of Islam, then Master Farah Muhammad say, I'm going to take it all away from you. And I'm going to take it away from you again until you get it right. You say, the nation will never fall again. It never rose up again. Farrakhan is not nation of Islam. None of these people are nation of Islam. It's gone. And you don't need that. Because this is a different time period. It served its purpose. It served its time. This is your time. This is our time. You murder your new idea. You make mockery of the new ideas. You know about Kemet. You know about the tribe of Shabazz. But you don't know about your history. You don't even know American history. You talk about slavery. But you really don't know exactly. The things that made America as powerful as it is. Yes it's true. They made a lot of. They got a lot of wealth. Because of slavery. But it took more. There's a lot of nations that had slaves. They did not become powerful like the United States. What was it? What is it that make America as powerful as it is? You know what happened 50,000 years ago. But you don't know what happened right here in this country. And you don't know what happened to yourself. Keep talking about some damn people you don't know nothing about you never met. You have no respect for yourself and have no value for yourself. 
you have ancestors that's living who are related to you right now that you know and you turn your nose up to them they don't know they don't know nothing but then you're going to talk about somebody from 1930 19, uh, 1900 1875 5,000 years ago that you never saw if you don't have any respect for the living how the hell can you have respect for the dead I'm going to say that again. If you don't respect the living, how the hell are you going to respect the dead? Because the dead can't do nothing for you. Who is more powerful? A dead lion or a living dog? You will see the living dog raise his leg and take a leap on the dead lion. The lion was only powerful when he or she was alive. Now that you're dead, the dog come by who's alive can come by and urinate on you. We learn from the past. Don't become the past. You love your mother. You love your father. But you're not them. You're yourself. Nobody knows it all. These leaders, the leader don't know it all. And human beings make mistakes. You fool yourself and you tell yourself a lie. Oh, that teaching is perfect. So and so don't make mistakes. You are, that's a damn lie. Everybody make mistakes. And where do you get that from? Because the Holy Quran and the Bible don't teach that. Because the prophets made mistakes. The prophet made errors. God had to put some of his messages, his prophets in check. So what make you think your leaders, they can't do no wrong? You're a damn fool. Because you made a God to them. They're not God. Elijah Muhammad is supposed to be the messenger of God. He's not God. The pastor is not Jesus. You don't even follow your own scriptures. You don't follow your own teachings because you got your nose all up in somebody's backside. And they don't give a damn about you. Many of these big shots, they don't know you. They will shake your hand and forget you the next day. They don't give a damn about you like that. Thank you. Their concern is sending them a check so you can pay their electric bill, their internet bill for them. That's what you do. You don't get nothing out of this relationship. You got to pretend you get something out of this relationship. You got to pretend. You should be sick of this. Ring around the roses nonsense. Are we that stupid? I said we because at one time I was stupid like that. But I can say this. Uh, when it came to my money. <laughs> when it came to my money. That's a no no. I don't mind selling some bean pies. I don't mind. Selling some newspaper, but when it came to my money, as hard as money was for me to get, oh no, I'm not. Farrakhan need to get a job. Elijah Muhammad need to get a job. And you should take care of yourself. How are you going to send all this money to Chicago when you have believers? Some of them don't have places to stay. They don't have jobs. You got to take care of your house. You got to take care of your own. If you don't take care of your own, how they going to take care of, how can they properly take care of Chicago? 
if all the members in the temple are doing well, then Chicago can do well. But you're giving all everything that you got so that you can please the honorable Elisha Muhammad, so that you can please Farrakhan. They don't give a damn if you're living or dead. And some of y'all work for white folks. You don't sell no newspapers. You buy the newspapers and put them in your car. I know because I've seen it and they, and they still do it. Because some of these brothers and sisters have real good jobs and they don't have time to go on the street like that. They don't need that quarter. They don't need that dime. They buy the new, the final call, throw them under the house, throw them in the back of their car or, or something like that. All these newspapers you think getting sold are not getting sold. Or they, they buy them and they give them away. That's not the purpose. The purpose is for the people to want. To show that they want, they would give you that dollar. You're not supposed to just give the newspaper away. But these brothers, some of these sisters, they making hella grip. And they can do that. But they won't give the poor brother, the poor sister in the temple, won't give them a dime. And you know they don't have nothing. I was 19 years old. Never had a job in my life, basically. Right out of high school. I didn't have nothing. Nobody gave me nothing, including my biological relatives who were also my brothers and sisters in the faith. They didn't give me nothing either. I was on my own. Oh, but y'all talk all this brotherhood and sisterhood crap. I get in trouble because I give. I used him. If I'm your brother and I see that you don't have, I'm supposed to help my brothers and sisters if I have. That's what I'm supposed to do. Then you help them, they'll turn around. I, I, I use Angel Snuff Nuff 7. Well, at least I can get used because you ain't going to use these other suckers because the only thing they do is take. They don't give you a damn thing. And that's who you like. You like the ones that take and give you nothing. I'm going to raise a million dollars and spend $250,000 on a raggedy so-called museum that look like a, a strip club and I'm going to pocket the rest of it. That's acceptable to you. I'm going to donate to you a million dollars to sue Google and then your case gets dismissed and so I'm going to buy me a mansion. I'm going to buy me a mansion, swimming pool, a Rolls Royce. That's acceptable to you. So you're going to continue to look like a damn fool. you already been looking like a fool the last 50 years. And you don't mind looking like a fool the next 50 years. You dumbass. You don't get angry at Angel Snuffin up seven. Because you are fool. We deserve better. But you're not going to get better if you don't ask and demand better. You're going to keep getting pimped the way you've been getting pimped for the last 50, maybe even 100 years. Getting pimped. The struggle is an investment and the investment should pay off. But you're so caught up around these personalities that give you nothing. I can't do it. And those who come to this platform, we cannot do that. This situation that we're in Needs to end once and for all. 
And if I can't do it, we're going to find somebody that can do it. I have no problem with saying stepping out the way because I can't get it done. It's, it's clear. It ain't, it ain't happening. We got to do it a different way. This is not a cult. So there should be, so there should have been a military coup if Elijah Muhammad was in violation. Regardless to your position because you violated God. You violated the restrictive law. And it goes to show that the so-called military, the fruit of Islam is a bunch of punks. You don't deserve no reward. And you got exactly what's coming to you. You're going to sit around and have a party when Malcolm X was murdered. When you should have treated Elijah Muhammad the same way as Malcolm and you probably would have found out the truth. There was a brother on Facebook who actually investigated and did his research and he found out that Ola Muhammad was 15 years old when Elijah Muhammad was interacting with her. And he was just like, yo, I don't believe that. I don't believe. Well, now he's done his own research and he found out the truth. What they would have found out when everything was fresh back in the 1960s is up to you. I'm Angel Snubbin' Up 7. I just wanted to get that off my chest. Maybe we can get together and talk this weekend. And uh, it's up to you. You want to continue to, to do this and get nothing? That's your business. I will continue to talk about how much of a damn fool you are. <laughs> Shout out to the Diggers of Reality, Twin Pyramid, and Soul Brother 85. And as Don Cornelius used to always say as in pardon, I wish us love, peace, and